Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Are you suffering from depression? Do you have suicidal thoughts? Well, if so, then I do not recommend that you listen to Pedersen's Eighth Symphony. Oh boy, this is a toughie, folks. But a goodie. I mean, it's not, not right. Listen, here's the bottom line. If you're going to listen to uh, Alan here, our buddy Alan Pedersen, then what you need to do is take all of your uh, controlled substances. And if you have any things like, you know, extra hunting knives or, you know, firearms, lock them all away somewhere. Give them to somebody who you trust and just put them away. And then we can start to talk about Alan Pedersen. Now, his dates were, let's see, 1911 to 1980. And the best way to sum him up probably would be if Bruckner had been a depressed atheist living in Sweden during the first half of the 20th century, then you probably would have something like Pedersen. Because like Bruckner, he wrote symphonies. His mature work consists of one symphony after another, basically with a few other other little little tidbits and jeu d'esprit. The eighth is one of my favorites, frankly, um, but there's of course a limit to how much of this you could take at any one time. The interesting thing about the eighth is that it has actually been recorded about four times. And anyone who knows about Pedersen knows uh, he, he had a neurological disease and, and he spent his life in a lot of physical discomfort. But the worst thing that I see mentioned over and over and over again in all of these disc book booklets is that he had to suffer the, the intolerable, absolutely inhuman torture of living in Swedish government housing with loud rock music playing all the time. Oh my God, can you imagine sitting there in the 1960s, the 1970s with Swedish rock music playing in your ears constantly? I mean, I mean, if I had to sit there listening to ABBA, I mean, just imagine he's sitting there suffering. His soul is in torment. And over and over again, you hear Dancing Queen. I mean, no wonder the Eighth Symphony sounds the way it does, huh? I mean, who can blame him? Really? You see, Pedersen's symphonies are usually sort of big, longish. I mean, some of them are short. Some of them are like 20, 25 minutes, but they're usually a single movement, close to an hour or so, basically slow, generally dark, grim, sometimes just agonizing, but with lyrical interludes. And after about the fifth symphony, he began to write more tonal and lyrical sections, and especially in the seventh and eighth, which are his most popular symphonies, popular among, you know, certain very austere, somewhat depressing Lutheran communities in Sweden, no doubt. Anyway, not, nothing against Lutherans, folks. I just, when I was in Scandinavia, everyone talked about how severe Lutheran, Lutheran, Scandinavian Lutheranism was. I don't know. I'm not a Scandinavian Lutheran. Pedersen, however, composed oh, a whole bunch of these things. Things I think there's like 11 or 12 or 13. It's just a lot of symphonies. They've all been recorded. They're all available in CPO. BIS has an ongoing cycle. Now the fourth has been recorded, as I said, four times. The first recording was Sergio Comissiona and the Baltimore Symphony. And I was in college when it happened. And I remember how excited we all were that Comissiona and the Baltimore Symphony were finally getting a recording. And it was on Deutsche Grammophone. And we all rushed out and bought it because we thought, oh, it's Swedish. It's Midsummer Mark 
Kava, it's it's Alfin, it's cheery and bucolic and pastoral, and then we put it on and we were ready to kill ourselves. And it was, we called it top of the lyric music because the Baltimore Symphony then played in the Lyric Theater. It was before they built Symphony Hall. And you wanted to just go onto the roof and jump off of it. I mean, that, that was where you were. Now, the Eighth Symphony is in two parts. There's no special reason why it needs to be in two parts, because part two sounds a lot like part one and has a lot of the same thematic material, but it is a one hell of an intense ride. Generally what happens in these pieces is that he starts out with some sort of, some sort of grim string polyphony with some often beautiful lyrical elements and then there'll be like a gradual crescendo and it'll get bigger and bigger with percussion fusillades going off and the music will distort into this this nightmarish vision of utter horror and then sort of calm down a little and then it'll do it again and some of the some of the thematic material is of remarkable simplicity which is what makes it even scarier because it just repeats over and over in this sort of bone chilling, numb, frozen kind of way. I mean, in the eighth, it's just a two note thing. It just goes da 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 da. Trust me, you'll never hear that again without wanting to go scream or hide in a closet or something like that. It's 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 unbelievable. So so there have been three other recordings since Sergio Comissiona almost killed the population of Baltimore. They are Thomas Sanderling on CPO and Gerd Albrecht on Orfeo and this one, Life Schickerstam with the Norrköping Symphony Orchestra on Bisp, which is the best. It is the best sonically and it's the best performance. It sounds like they actually rehearsed it quite a bit before they played it. These pieces are terribly difficult to do. They're extremely draining emotionally, as you can well imagine. They are technically quite difficult because you have to sustain these long, tortured lines for a very long time. I mean, the eighth lasts 46 minutes in two parts, and the the tenth here is only 24 minutes, and it kind of sounds like, you know, the eighth, <laughs> sort of, kind of. It's it's Pedersen, you know, like I said, he's it's a little bit like Bruckner, you know. It's not they all sound the same, but they all sound recognizably, recognizably what they are. So uh, what can I say other than you should hear Pedersen when you're in the right frame of mind? Uh, I I I've played it for friends of mine who were having you know sort of a a, a goth rebellious phase that worked. Um, for people who think that they're vampires, that works. Um, for people who like horror movie soundtracks, that's absolutely perfect. And, you know, there are times when it, they're really, really absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's the perfect music for a pandemic. I mean, let's, let's face it. This is, this is just what you want to hear. Pedersen himself was notably unsentimental and apparently a very difficult person, which you can well believe after you hear the Eighth Symphony. He, he apparently thought that his music was simply about the, the misery of human existence. And I think I could well believe that if that's what your perspective is. Now, I tend to be like a happy guy, as some of you may know, and I don't take these things quite as seriously as their composers probably intended which for me, I think is a kind of insulation against the abject horror that the music would otherwise induce because it is magnificent music, it truly is. It just needs to be understood and taken with, I wouldn't say a grain of salt, but with a certain, a certain healthy emotional distance so that you can appreciate it in a more objective sphere. Does that make any sense? Well, I, you know, if it doesn't, don't listen to Pedersen's Eighth Symphony. But anyway, if you're going to get it, then this version with Segerstam on Bis is definitely the way to go. And and I do recommend, after all, after all of this folderol and foolishness, 
that you really should hear at least one Pedersen symphony just to see what the idiom is because he was an immensely serious and emotionally powerful artist who wrote incredibly gripping music. Um, and, uh, you know, you, if you're going to start somewhere, you would start with the seventh or the eighth. And I prefer the eighth because it has two parts. You can go to the bathroom in between them, you know, or, or somewhere else and get some air. You know what I mean? So Pedersen's eighth, that's the piece for you if you're having only one. So keep on listening and don't worry, even this won't make you stop. I guarantee it. Take care.